The next reaction we're going to learn is called the Curtius rearrangement. And the Curtius is quite curious because you can see we initially start with an acid chloride where we have a carbon attached to this phenyl ring and this carbon somehow becomes a nitrogen. So it certainly tells us that we have some rearrangement take place. Um, along the way we're going to make an isocyanate as the product. And we do this by just mixing sodium azide with an acid chloride and adding a bit of heat. So even though I, you guys have not seen these two molecules react before, you can probably expect that azide is a great nucleophile. You'll be able to add into the very electrophilic acid chloride. You'll be able to go and make a tetrahedral intermediate. Where now we have this very good chloride leaving group that is able to leave to give a new acyl azide. So we've never seen an acyl azide before. Turns out they're uh, thermally unstable. As you heat them up to about 100 degrees Celsius, they start to lose nitrogen spontaneously. To see how the rest of this mechanism works, we really want to go and draw out the azide a bit more explicitly. So whenever you draw an azide, there's always going to be charges within it that are neutralized. So overall, it's net neutral. And we can draw further resonance structures that give us more information of maybe ways to think about how this can break down. So we can move the negative charge from that nitrogen and put it onto this oxygen. This, I think, separates the molecule a little bit more. And we see that we have this positive charge on the nitrogen that's essentially an N2+. plus. So this nitrogen really wants to leave. It wants to go away, and nitrogen is evolved during the reaction. So during the reaction, we can see that if this is going to try to take alone, uh, a, the electrons will go towards the nitrogen to make it neutral nitrogen departing. So we're losing nitrogen gas. We would end up putting, we'd end up with a low valent positively charged nitrogen that'll be very unstable. So as positive charge builds on this nitrogen, this sigma bond can migrate over. And this sigma bond migration is further promoted by the lone pair able to come down and make a carbon oxygen double bond. So along the way, we're going to have this phenyl ring attached now to this nitrogen. We're going to make a carbon oxygen double bond. And this gets us to the isocyanate directly. So it's not that, uh, that many steps to do the courteous rearrangement, but there is a fairly tricky set of arrows to push. But I think if you remember that nitrogen is a good leaving group and we need to have the bond migrate to accompany it, I think this will help out. And so this is a section on amines. And so this is not an amine. This is an isocyanate, as I said before. But if you were to take just water and heat this up, we're able to go and make an aniline or any primary amine. This doesn't necessarily need to be an aryl acid chloride for this reaction to work. And of course, we can still go and do other reactions where we lose CO2 along the way here. If you were to add an alcohol, this would get us to make urethanes or carbamates. And if we were to add in something like a primary amine, this will now make the ureas that we learned from the last class. So this is a pretty powerful way to uh, synthesize amines. And something to always keep in mind is that this involves a loss of carbon. So if you're trying to use this to make a primary amine, this will have one less carbon than what you started with because it does end up getting transformed into the isocyanate functional group.